there. Welcome to another video here from the cemetery uh, from my series called Hope from the Cemetery. This is May Renfro here with you uh, from my Lights for Jesus website and blog and um, from my YouTube channel if that's where you're um, catching these. Um, yes, welcome to my third of this series. It's for the summer of 2020 that I'm doing just a mini series uh, because I have hope and encouragement inspiration to give you and and I want to come down here to the cemetery to 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 do that. Um, yes, hope from the cemetery, hope for maybe the most unlikely place. Um, and um, if you're new to these, you may be wondering why here, why this is cemetery. And I would really encourage you to watch the first um, one and two. Um, it's called uh, Hope uh, from the Cemetery with May. So this, yes, is my third one. Um, the first two that I did, I did at the same time I was here. I was just come down one time. I recorded both those videos uh, one time. So now probably a couple more weeks have passed since, and I'm down here to do the third one. So just, um, so I'm really excited about doing these and um, to give the hope and encouragement that I have in me. I, I'm squatting mosquitoes right here, right now. So that's what's going on. There's mosquitoes quite a bit. So I'm like, oh, my legs, arms, okay, mosquitoes. So back to, um, and so just to recap where, I, where I'm uh, standing right here, this is our son's um, gravestone right there. I'm just right uh, down here by my feet. One that has a deer on it. And then back behind me, there's the two with the, with the flowers. Uh, the second one is my dad and then my brother Lee's. So in the first video, um, oh man, these mosquitoes are bad. The first video, yeah, I explained my, our son Clayton passed away at the age of 14 in a quad accident on uh, April the 19th of 2017. So just over three years and just a very sudden, he just went out with a quad and um, it didn't, he was by himself. It didn't appear that he had played around um, and he really just kind of got in a wrong angle somehow on the hill. It was just a very little slope by a dugout and um, it just rolled over on him and he uh, he was, he died instantly of a broken uh, neck, the autopsy showed. And so just very sudden here one moment and gone the next. Um, but I felt that it was his time to go, you know, and, and that he would still be here. And that was what gave me that peace, um, as I explained in the, in the first one. Um, but yeah, just two months short of his 15th birthday. So two months after he passed away, we celebrated his 15th birthday with the husband and the children. And then we went to um, the funeral home the next day and ordered this gravestone for him. So it was 15th birthday one day, gravestone the next day. Uh, you can imagine, only imagine how hard that would be. It's very, very hard, but God is one that kept us going. And, and that's, you know, and I'm now, you know, I want to give that hope and encouragement that, that there is hope, there is healing after a, a sudden tragic loss like that. And, um, you know, my dad then uh, passed away um, very suddenly. It was probably from a heart attack, though we did not do, um, an autopsy was not done to show that, but in his sleep. So um, the age of 79, just a couple months short of his 80th birthday. And, uh, that was in the fall of 2018 and my brother Lee on uh, the third grave over with the flowers um, um, December 22nd of 2019 so not too many months ago and uh, another a very sudden as well the vehicle, vehicle accident to roll over so just um, um, here you know one moment with us in and, and, and gone the next and as it says in James our life is like a vapor here today gone tomorrow so we really I uh, need to to realize that and see that life is a, a miracle and a gift and each day is, is a gift you know from God that he gives us and he says not to boast what we shall do on to, on the morrow um, but if it's the Lord's will we will do this or that and I think that's what really is coming to perspective for me now is that really you know um, is is to realize that just the fragility of life that I maybe didn't before um, and just that um, that life is is a true miracle and um, we need to be living every day for God because we don't know um, when our time is up here on on earth and um, 
Yeah, and what I want to do with, with these videos, what I think would be really special is that if you're following along, uh, just right now when I'm doing these, like over the summer, when you're, you, you, if you would get each video, so if you uh, could subscribe on my YouTube channel, if you're catching them on the blog, as soon as I do one, I will post it you know, quickly on my blog so you can catch them almost immediately. Just follow me, my journey along through the summer. And I wanted just to connect wherever you you know, there'll be something that I'm hoping that's going to be spoken into your life at the moment that you need it. You know, you're watching these and you're like, wow, she said that that is what I needed to hear. And how is that possible for me to be able to, you know, do something because with the Holy Spirit, right, with God's spirit, he knows what you need to hear when you need to hear it. And, and I, I would never know. And that's what I'm really excited about these is as I'm doing them, that someone is watching, I'm wanting to have kind of uh, those following that are you know, catching me uh, as I do these and we'll journey together through the summer, whatever God might have for us. Like I want him just to give me what he wants me to say for the next video, for the next video and not uh, me just have them all lined up, but um, just to speak through me. So my prayer is, and I want you to journey through with me this summer, but then if, you know, if, uh, for just for months later, next year, years later, when you're catching these, you know, it's still to be an encouragement and a hope to you in whatever situation you're in. But that's kind of what I would like just for you guys to, to be able to follow along right now, this summer, as I'm doing these. Um, and what I really wanted to talk about, uh, this time is just, um, the story of Joseph in the Bible has been such a blessing and encouragement uh, to me since our loss is really my my go-to like just example of of loss for him well, not just things going against him I guess and his story is the story of Joseph so I'll just re kind of recount that really quick just do a short version of the story of Joseph in Genesis how um, he was had 11 brothers and he um, his brothers were uh, jealous of him. He was having a, a lot of uh, dreams and dreams that they didn't like that kind of showed his superior uh, authority of, of them. And dreams, one dream that really kind of just took the cake for them was that he, he, sh he said that they were bowing down to him. And um, that was just too much. They didn't like that. And that he was his father's favorite as well. And that's not good for parents to have favorites. Not, uh, you know, that's a bad thing. And, um, and so they were jealous of him and they didn't like him. They hated him, I says. And so one time um, when he went out to check on his uh, brothers, um, they decided to enough was enough. They got him, they threw him in a pit, and then they sold him into to some uh, slave traders going to Egypt. And he was sold as a slave. So there he is working as a slave far, far, far from his family in a foreign country. And um, and then things just kind of went got worse from there. He was falsely accused. Uh, by Potiphar's wife thrown in prison and he was in there for some time it doesn't really say that I know of and and there was this baker and the butler in there uh, Pharaoh's and uh, they had a dream uh, both had a dream and he interpreted the dream and the butler was to be released and and so when he was to release uh, Joseph told Pharaoh will tell um, no, yeah tell the butler to have uh, told the butler to tell the uh, Pharaoh about him and well it wasn't I guess till two years later that it says that the butler remembered him when the Pharaoh had his own dream that needed interpreted and he remembered oh Joseph Joseph interprets dreams well from God though through God but Joseph interpreted his dream he'll tell um he will uh t so he told Pharaoh about uh Joseph he was brought out he did interpret the dream uh for Pharaoh and it was about dream where there was going to be seven years of plenty in the land and then seven years of famine and and so then Joseph was put in charge to save the grain uh to save up in the plenty so that in the famine that um they would be ready for the anyone for everybody to come and his brothers in fact came um there all the way to Egypt to get heard of the grain there and they came to get grain for his family and it was some time before Joseph you know, a couple trips there Joseph revealed himself who he was but uh what is so beautiful is that all those things going against him being hated by those brothers sold into slavery uh thrown into prison all these things going against him he could be wondering what's the plan where's my miracle now, what's the plan here? God, um, you know, desperately needing a miracle. And, and, um, because that's where, you know, I was after all loss. It's like, what is the plan? You know, I felt there was a plan right for the beginning, right? I felt there was a plan that uh, God 
had for me in it. But after several months not seeing that, it was just like, where's the plan, God? Where's my miracle? I need a miracle. I want that, you know, something to come out of this. Boom. But things don't always just happen that quick. Because we see with the story of Joseph, it was over quite a length of time that something came came of it. But what's beautiful is that where he was wondering uh, where it would be, where's the plan? He was in the plan. He was right smack in the plan. He was right where God needed him, right at the time he was needed. And he saved many nations from starving, including his own family, his own brothers. And it's a story for great uh, forgiveness too. Uh, forgiveness and family are uh, restored and brought back together again. And uh, I just really like that to how um, so much going against him and it was turned around for his good, for God's uh, glory. And that's the way I feel uh, God is doing. You know, for, I feel it's the same for you and I. We can just take that story and just claim it and know that all of these things going against us is really getting us to where God needs us, where he needs us, when he needs us, at the time he needs us. We're learning what he wants us to learn. We're growing closer to him, stronger. And he's got a plan and a purpose, just like he did for Joseph, a plan and a purpose. There's a few verses I want to read to you that just sum that story of Joseph up uh, perfectly. Let's grab my notes here right quick. Um, yes, this is in uh, Genesis uh, 50, uh, 20, and uh, Genesis 45, 7 through 8. It says, God sent me before you to preserve you with prosperity in the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to the Pharaoh and lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as is this, this day to save many people alive. Wow. Beautiful. So even though for a long time it appeared that everything was going against him and his world was completely falling apart, it was actually falling into place and he was right where God wanted him and needed him. You know, and I just believe that's the, the same for you and I. We just have to keep trusting, keep believing, um, keep praying and keep praising and keep thanking him. And, and he, and, and Scott, this plan, if we can trust him enough. And I think that is the question, uh, are we going to trust him enough? Um, and, and just to, to give him our all and say, Lord, you know, I belong to you. I surrender everything to you. Use, use me, use this that you brought into my life and, and he will. So I, so I just want to give you today that he, that he will and he doesn't make mistakes he doesn't make accidents and he'll work this all out for your good and his glory yes romans 8 28 another verse that i just clung to romans 8 28 where all things work together for good to them who are called according to his purpose and um and know that he is on the throne he's in charge he knows what's best for you and i and he can bring uh great and beautiful things out of our tragedies we let him. So yeah, I uh, thank you for listening and stay tuned for more you, great resources at my website and blog. And uh, I'll be doing more of these in the very near future. And join me this summer for these great series, um, Hope in the Cemetery with me, the Summer 2020 series. Okay, take care. God bless.